Hi, my name is Emma. You can also call me M, like the letter, or E-M, whichever one floats your boat. So welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a project if you want. It's time for some good old-fashioned TikTok crochet drama. As always, let's be respectful. You can have your discussions here in the comments if you want, but don't go to anyone's pages that I mentioned here. And be on your best behavior, okay? This stuff's not that deep. If you don't know, crochet talk is one of the many niches on TikTok, and it's such a big niche that it has its own niches, one of which is amigurumi TikTok, which is where the drama today takes place. This drama revolves primarily around two large crochet creators, Crochet Grove, who has 212,000 followers, and Katie Did, who has 830,000. At this point, it has been a few weeks since this all went down, but I was finishing my Ravelry part two video and I had to wait to finish that before I could start working on this one. But I'm glad that I did wait because there have been some updates to the story that I want to include. But before we get into any of this, let's hear a little bit from today's sponsor, Care Of. Thank you to Care Of for sponsoring this video. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders to your door every month. So I've been eating a plant-based diet, basically vegan, but a little bit flexible since 2021. And while I do try and eat a nice balanced diet, there are some vitamins that I need to go out of my way to get. So I've been wanting to find a good supplement routine for a while now, but honestly, I just got so overwhelmed with the research of everything, of like going through all the lists of like best supplements for vegan and deciding what I really needed. So I really enjoyed using Care Of. How it works is you take the quiz to tell Care Of about your goals, lifestyle, and values. Care Of then provides you with a list of recommendations that is third party tested with research backed ingredients. And then once they give you the results, you can request certain supplements and opt out of others. I've taken supplements before, but the convenience of the packs being sent straight to my house has been a game changer and it makes it so I have no excuse not to take them. They come in this fun box with a little dispenser at the bottom and every packet says my name on it and it has all of the little vitamins I need. And uh, yeah, I know you're being nosy, you wanna know which ones I'm taking. So Care Of recommended a multivitamin and iron to fill some of the gaps in my plant-based diet. Calcium Plus for my bones so I can be strong. Rhodiola for my brain and stress. God knows I need that. And vegetarian collagen for my skin because I love taking care of my skin. If you wanna try it for yourself, use my code MOMENT50 for 50% off your first order from Kara. Thanks again to Kara for sponsoring this video. Back to the story. Okay, so like I said, the two creators at the center of this story are Crochet Grove or Annabelle, who has 212,000 followers, and Katie Dids or Katie, who has 830,000 followers. Katie also has a second kind of spam account on TikTok with 14,000 followers, which according to a post on that account is her old Musical.ly account from 2016, which she now makes non-business related posts on. This will come up later. It's called Katie Didn't, which is funny because her other one is called Katie Did. And she has this running bit where she puts a mustache on herself and pretends that she's not her, which is pretty funny. This will come up later, so remember this. A little more context before we get too far into this is that Annabelle and Katie and a lot of other people on crochet TikTok spend a significant amount of time on lives. Katie has a rotating group of friends that will go live together and crochet. It seems like these lives in combination with pattern sales are how these creators make the majority of their money. From what I can tell, Crochet Grove was friends with Katie for a while, was a part of some of these lives, and then they had somewhat of a private falling out and Crochet Grove stopped being in the lives, interacting with Katie's content, and according to Katie, was blocked. So this whole drama all began on November 25th, 2023, when Crochet Grove posted a nearly 10 minute long TikTok with the caption, part one of my truth. Annabelle posted this TikTok on her backup account, which is Crochet Grove with two E's. This account was created for the sole purpose of putting this video out. Not to get ahead of myself too much, but in the past, at least one creator who has spoken out against Katie has had their account mass reported to the point that TikTok took their account down. So, you know, I'm a little scared to post this video. I, I will be the first to admit it. But I think YouTube is a little bit slower about takedowns. Um, we'll see. But if this video and or my channel suddenly disappears, then I don't know. I think we'll know what happened. Not saying anything, but if something were to happen. Anyway. In this TikTok, Annabelle brings up a few grievances that she has with Katie, including some upsetting Reddit posts, passive aggression and minor bullying, and you guessed it, some copying accusations. This video is still up on her TikTok. I'll link it below if you wanna watch it in full for yourself. I'm gonna go through sort of beat by beat and tell you all of the important things that you need to know. And remember, this is just part one, so we'll get to part two as well. So the Reddit drama. Annabelle starts the video by mentioning that a while ago, she was in a private conflict with someone that was traumatizing. From the screenshots in her video, 
video, you can guess a little bit about the context of the conflict and who it was with, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today and I don't really know the full story, so let's just move on. There's a lot to go through. Basically, she says that she had confided in Katie as a friend about this situation. Then Katie allegedly went on a burner Reddit account, dry surround 3699, and started bashing this person that Annabelle was in conflict with and kind of making them both look bad, according to Annabelle. How do we know that this burner account is Katie? Well, because she sent a screenshot in a group message with Crochet Grove in it saying, this is me. Annabelle doesn't point this out, but oddly to me, Katie uses a black woman emoji in this post as a way, I think, to deflect it from being traced back to her. And she brings this up herself in the group chat. She says, yes, I have a black emoji. I don't know, just kind of weird. Katie's not black. She does a similar thing to this later on as well. So then Annabelle sends a voice memo to Katie and says, hey, can you take the post down? I'm going to bed, um, but yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to like upset you or anything. I just like really don't want to be on that Reddit. <laughs> and I, I feel like, like my situation getting brought up can just like lead into a pile more of people talking about me and like, <laughs> I know I was like 100% right in that situation. I just like, I, I can't handle people talking about me. Like I don't like it at all. But yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep. I hope you have a good day. And um, I don't know what else I was gonna say. And instead of responding or even acknowledging Annabelle's message at all, Katie allegedly responds with this image, which yeah, is weird. At the time, Katie also posted this on her story. While a small handful of people complained about me on Reddit, I made 12 items, slept, and minded my own damn business. Guess I'll always be the main character. Annabelle brings these up to showcase Katie's character. In this situation, it appears Katie has exposed private information on Reddit to make her friend look bad, has ignored her friend's request to take the post down, and sees herself as above the hate on Reddit because she is the main character. This seems to just start to escalate as things go forward. Annabelle goes on to say that her own TikTok lives start doing really well. So while Katie and her group of friends would often go live together, they'd also sometimes go live alone, which makes sense. These lives alone seemed to consist mostly of them crocheting and interacting with and answering craft related questions from the chat, while the group lives had the added layer of group conversations between the creators. All that to say, Annabelle's lives started doing pretty well and she had up to 2000 people in the live, which is a decent amount of viewers. According to Annabelle, there was one time where she went live and then Katie also went live at the same time. Katie then asked to join her live and Annabelle declined. Then Katie allegedly started telling the people that were in her live to not go to Annabelle's live because there were too many people in there and it wasn't even fun. Which to me just sounds like how a kid responds when something doesn't go their way. Can I play kickball with you guys? Hey, sorry, our team is full for kickball today. Maybe next time? No, I don't care. You guys are boring. I didn't even wanna play anyway. Kickball's for babies. <laughs> but all of this part of the story is just based on Annabelle's word. She says she doesn't have any screen recordings of this happening because she was live at the same time. So we'll take this all with a grain of salt, okay? Around this time, Annabelle had decided that she didn't really wanna be friends with Katie anymore due to some drama in the group chat. And if I had to speculate to probably some of the bullying that she seemed to be experiencing. In response to the drama in the group chat, Katie and her other friends apparently started posting some very passive aggressive things on their stories. I'm gonna show you just a few, you can pause if you'd like. And in lives, Katie started making playlists called Double Standard and Backstabber. Alexa, play Double Standard playlist. Double Standard from Apple Music. Thank you. This is my favorite playlist. It only has five songs on it, but it's a vibe. Okay, moving on for now, Annabelle next brings up some minor copying accusations against Katie. Annabelle says that she posted working on a stitch pattern about a week ago, like Stitch from like Lilo and Stitch, the Disney movie, like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, whose IP is owned by Disney, that Stitch. And then the next day, Annabelle posted a really similar video. Both of them posted videos with the same Hawaiian roller coaster ride sound, which I think is pretty funny. <laughs> Hawaiian roller coaster ride. There's no place I'd rather be than on a seashore drive ride free. I'll go on the sand is where I lay. And if I only had my way, I play till the sun sets beyond the horizon. <laughs> It's time to try the 
Hawaiian roller coaster ride. Do, 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 okay, so do, I've got one detail slightly wrong. The Hawaiian roller coaster ride videos were posted in a flipped order. So Crochet Grove posted a sneak peek of her stitch and scump patterns. Here is like what the sneak peek was. Like they really were just in the background. And then a few days later, Katie posted the Hawaiian roller coaster ride video, and then Annabelle posted a Hawaiian roller coaster ride video. Confusing, I know, but anyway. Katie and Annabelle both also made Five Nights at Freddy's inspired projects around the same time, which also could be coincidental because of the timing of when that was released and everything, but this isn't really, it's not, I'm not here to speculate on whether this was copying or not. It doesn't really matter. Just another thing that Annabelle brought up. Do you like Five Nights at Freddy's? Well, I'm gonna be live now finishing this Freddy that I'm making. But in this situation, we learn a few things as well about Katie and Annabelle. When Katie posted, someone commented saying, so are you and Annabelle like playing who can make theirs first? Laughing face emoji. You guys make the same items and post them the same day, monocle emoji. Or is my FYP playing me, LOL. To which Katie responds, I have her blocked and don't see her things. I posted the stitch yesterday on my Instagram stories and here on TikTok using Hannah's patterns. The commenter then responds again saying, Oh dang, I didn't know it was like that between you two. Sorry, I seriously thought you guys were being funny. Cause when you made FNAF, then she did too. And now the Lilo and Stitch characters, again, sorry, didn't mean to stir anything up. Which is interesting for Katie to respond like that to a seemingly innocent comment. So Annabelle was planning on releasing a pattern for this Stitch doll. So she was planning on profiting from the design. She says that on the video she posted about the Stitch pattern, a random account with two followers asked her how she goes about licensing for a pattern with Disney IP. Which is a totally valid question considering how strict Disney is with that kind of stuff. Like I'm genuinely curious about that as well. I don't know how anybody is able to do that. And then instead of answering this question in the comments, Annabelle says, I deleted their comment because I had a horrible day and I could not mentally handle answering any questions. So I deleted their comment, didn't think much of it. They came back very rude and said, how do you get away with in capitals stealing patterns from Disney? There was more to it. Unfortunately, I didn't get a screenshot because I didn't think much of it. So she deleted the comment. And then she later got another comment on that post saying that there was a post about her on Reddit. Sorry, this is all a little bit convoluted. So then Annabelle goes to Reddit and the Reddit post called Deleting Queen Crochet Grove said, just a heads up, if you comment a question about licensing because you honestly don't know how it works, buying someone's pattern and selling the finished item, Crochet Grove will delete your comment and block you. I don't understand. I was really interested in her stitch pattern but was wondering the risk and now I'm blocked. I guess that's how she keeps her comment section filled with children and not crafters. Super cheerful Annabelle. So angry I voted for her over others. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here and we will in a second, but a little bit more first. So then Annabelle went into the Reddit thread herself and apologized for having a bad week slash last few months and that the comment came off as rude. So she deleted it and just blocked the person, but that she can unblock them if they want to continue to ask her questions. And she also apologizes for being rude. And guess what? Seven and a half minutes into Annabelle's first video is this big reveal that the person who made the deleting queen post is actually Dry Surround 3699, otherwise known as Katie. Annabelle says that Katie was in her comments harassing her about licensing, which I gotta say, I don't think asking a question about licensing is harassing. Like, yeah, now that we know it was Katie, I know it wasn't a genuine question, but just saying, hey, how do you deal with licensing on this Disney character isn't harassing. It's a question that doesn't have an immediately obvious answer. Like, yeah, you can Google it, but I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. I might genuinely ask that to someone. There's a bit of back and forth here in the Reddit thread and you can go watch the video if you wanna see it all. It's not all super relevant until someone else comments in the thread and says, Maybe go ask Katie about licenses since she seems to be copying everything Crochet Grove does and is all of a sudden making stitches after Crochet Grove was already sneak peeking hers. Don't know who this person is. I tried looking on Reddit, but it just says they haven't posted anything. I won't even speculate on who this might be, like if it's a burner account or something, I don't know. But anyway, Katie Undercover then responds to this. She starts off by intentionally misspelling her own name, again, to sort of throw you off her scent a little bit. She says, 
Katie isn't selling stitch patterns. I don't defend Katie. I watched them both and voted for Annabelle, but Katie has been modding Hannah Gurumi patterns into a lot of things lately and spoke about making Five Nights at Freddy's for her kids even before the movie. I don't think either is copying. I think it's popularity coincidence. But why are you so aggressively pinning these two against each other? Seems they have both been minding their business and don't want drama. But I'm just a guy in this world, so what do I know? I'm just a guy in this world, what do I know? Okay. <laughs> so that's a crazy thing to write, first of all. But this means then that Katie's Reddit persona is both just a guy in this world and a black woman, or just a guy who uses a black woman emoji and either of those or any of those options are weird. So then in Annabelle's TikTok, she accuses Katie of manipulating people to get in their heads about voting for her. This came up a few times. Voting for what? The Cheer Choice Awards. Oh, Emma, what are the Cheer Choice Emma, Awards? What are, what are the Cheer what Choice please, Awards? Please, please, please. Yeah, 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 glad you asked. The Cheer Choice Awards are a charity award show to honor positive creators on social media who are making an impact utilizing their platform. The awards show serves as a fundraiser for Spread the Cheer USA, whose mission is to help families in need. This organization began in 2020 and the Cheer Choice Awards have been around since 2023. So this is only their second year. They highlight creators over 41 categories. The category most relevant to this video is their art category, which has three separate awards the Visionary Creator Award, the Cosplay Expressionist Award, and the Culinary Creative Award. And both Annabelle and Katie were nominated for the 2024 Visionary Creator Award. The way the voting works for these awards is that everyone gets one free vote per day per category. So if I were to go on the website right now, I can click on any of the creators in the Visionary Creators category and vote for them by filling in my first and last name, phone number, and my social media handle. If, however, I wanted to vote for my favorite creator more than once a day, I could pay a little bit extra and get some extra votes. The votes are mostly $1 per vote, but as an incentive to spend more, there is a little sliding scale. So for $5, I could buy five votes, and for $200, I could buy 250 votes. According to an email from the Cheer Choice Awards to Annabelle, the rules for this are, no voting for yourself, no paying for others to vote on your behalf, and no utilizing third-party software to get votes. So now we're caught up to the beginning of My Truth Part 2, which Annabelle posted on a Burner YouTube account. Another thing to add at this point is that Katie was nominated in the same category for the Cheer Choice Awards last year and won. In My Truth Part 2, Annabelle provides extensive receipts showing that Katie paid for a pretty significant amount of votes. I'm just gonna splice these all together and you can see them all back to back. For a little context, Vince is her husband and Hannah is one of her friends in the group chat. Okay, so what, this is my way of thinking since we can't see how many votes is right now I'm in fourth and I did just put it in my stories, but it's not being seen a lot. Hannah, I just sent Hannah $200, so she's going to buy 250 votes. And if 250 votes pushes me to second or first place or wherever it puts me, then I know, you know, 250 votes is how far behind I was. But yeah, more than likely, um, I'll probably send more money to one of you guys on like the 29th. Fuck Vince and his limits. I'm going to do 400. <laughs> I'm gonna do 400 and then I'm gonna buy this. How annoying, she literally had, see this is what I said, it's somebody was gonna just not try this whole entire time. Now she's fucking trying. <laughs> uh, it's fine, everything's fine. But I'm not even joking, tonight Vince is gonna get mad, I don't even care, I'm gonna wait till he goes to sleep. Um, I'm, watch all your PayPals. I'm sending all of you guys like 200 bucks at some point today. Um, I'm buying my way. I'm buying my way. So just from the screenshots and voice memos that Annabelle provides here, it looks like Katie purchased a minimum of $900 worth of votes or 1,125 votes. Please check my math on this. I may have missed this somewhere. There might be a, an updated number somewhere in there that I missed, but that's on the low end. Annabelle then says that people are scared to speak up against Katie because Katie might send her people after them. I understand a lot of people in this community, we rely on our pages as our main income and that you simply cannot afford to stand up for yourself because she will send her people after you. 
The bottom line is, no matter what you're going through, that is no excuse to treat someone like this. I hope you guys don't look at me any differently, and I'm sorry that it took so long for me to speak up, but it can be scary speaking up against someone that has um, attacked people for speaking up in the past. So one day after this, on November 26th, Katie posts an apology video on her burner account. Katie didn't. She starts off by saying, I'm not gonna address everything that happened. I'm not saying that the way they perceived and felt isn't correct, but it's also not the way I felt. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> let's watch some of it. Okay, let's talk about it. I let some really big time jealousy and stupid kids on the internet, um, affect me big time. I had a very immature, ridiculous, not smart, not thought through moment uh, on Reddit. The apology honestly probably isn't gonna mean crap to this person, um, but I, I take it back. I am so sorry. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done on the internet. I do not know why I did that. I do not know. So then she goes on to say that she completely owned up to the Cheer Choice Awards and confessed to the crime of buying votes. Kind of, except she doesn't say it exactly like that. I did completely own up. I told them I, I knew that I just couldn't vote for myself. I did send money to a friend for them to vote and donate to charity. Okay, but who did you tell them to vote for? Her framing this as, oh no, I was just donating to charity and kind of trying to play dumb about the rules is pretty insidious after we heard the voice memos in Annabelle's video, in my opinion. She then clarifies in her apology that Katie Dids did not vote for Katie Dids, as in like she didn't actually vote for herself, which is true, but she did pay someone to vote for her. She then tries to show a kind of moral superiority by saying, oh, I didn't even vote for my personal email account because I knew that would disqualify me. So we're supposed to believe that she knew that was wrong, but that she didn't know it was wrong to pay for votes in the way that she did. So as you can imagine, that video did not go over well. While only a small portion of Katie's audience saw it due to it being posted on her smaller burner account, the reaction was mostly negative. She quickly took the video down, apparently not deleting it, but setting it to friends only, which is even funnier for an apology video than just deleting it. And this is the only comment I have a screenshot of. You forgot your ukulele. An apology video is staple at this point. But yeah, overall, not great reception. Then later that day, Katie posted a text only video saying, I just want to clear the air. Absolutely no one knew the immature, stupid thing I did on Reddit. Not my crochet friends or my closest friend. I acted like I had nothing to do with it when others found it and have had tough conversations with those people about my actions. Please don't take any punishment out on others. I caused this, this is mine to sit in. This is mine to feel and learn from. This is no one else's. They have been hurt in this also and my apologies will never be enough. I'm taking full responsibility for my actions and I own this giant mistake I've made, but please don't be rude to people who had nothing to do with this. Which in a vacuum is like a pretty good statement to make, right? But we're not in a vacuum. I'm not sure exactly what she was talking about in referencing people being rude to her friends. I didn't personally really see any evidence of people being rude to any of her friends, but that's just me. This video has 21,000 views, 166 likes, and 208 comments, mostly negative, but some, positive or neutral. I saw quite a few people commenting saying they had no idea what was going on, which is fair because it was kind of hard to track down all of this information if you didn't know where to look. My favorite comment on this video is one from Naughty Mama. Katie, why isn't this posted to your actual Katie Dids TikTok? Is it because you literally think you didn't do it? So the thing with this apology is that first of all, there's no context, right? What are we talking about? Just an immature stupid thing I did on Reddit. Yeah, you can call it an immature stupid thing that you did on Reddit, but calling it that doesn't make it right all of a sudden. I think it's great to stand up for your friends if they're receiving harassment. A lot of times when drama happens, just being associated with someone in the drama can then put you at risk of being harassed, which I personally think is strange. Like everyone's an adult, people make their own decisions. So yeah, people weren't buying her non-apology or her second non-apology that she posted after deleting the first one. Then on the next day, on the 27th, she posted another text only video. This one said, if everyone could leave my child out of this mess, please. Children don't have a place in adult drama. There is nothing on her accounts, no reason for grown women to be posting a child's username and then searching it. She has profile views on, so we have all your names. Let me and me alone take this punishment. 
If you want to be the bigger bully, bully me. Leave the children and people who had nothing to do with it alone. Okay, yeah, so this is shocking to read, right? Like, what's going on with her child? It's really scary that people are potentially harassing her child over drama that is, quite frankly, not that serious. And I mean, at this point, yeah, we can agree that Katie did something pretty unethical with the buying votes thing, and she seems to have a bit of a track record of being a bully, but this is not a harass someone's child crime. Nothing is, actually. Like, she is right. She's right. If you have a problem with her, come to her. But, and I, I hate to say but there, <laughs> This isn't all as it seems. The story going around that Katie seems to be pushing is that someone posted her child's username in a Reddit thread. Apparently it was up all day and in that time, 160 people viewed her child's TikTok account and looked at like it. They, they just clicked on the profile there's no profile picture, her name is not there, and there are no videos on the account. This is sort of hard to piece together because there's a lot of mixed stories going around and a lot of things have been deleted. But from what I can tell, no one has sent any messages or left any comments harassing her child. The most that anyone has done is click on her handle. And I'm not saying that isn't a scary thing to have your child's TikTok exposed and then for people to go look at it. But a little bit more context is that Katie regularly brings up her child, talks about her child's account. It's a kind of known handle on Katie's page. And people who follow her are aware of her child's name and her child's TikTok. And this TikTok account is public. So I'm not going to sit here and say that if people were harassing her child that they were in the right. Like that is wrong. There's no justification for that. But I am saying if the facts that I have laid out here are true, which I'm not really 100% sure, would love if anybody else knows anything about this. If these facts are true, this account was already public and people could already look at Katie it. Katie later posts proof of the people who allegedly looked at her daughter's TikTok account, but there's no way to see when these views occurred or even confirmation that it is in fact her child's account, which makes sense because she doesn't want to put her child's account out there, I guess, again. The interesting thing though is at this point, people are becoming really sympathetic to Katie and she's starting to kind of win them back. It's a bit of a tricky subject and not one I want to speculate too much on given how few actual details I have about what happened. If anyone harassed Katie's child, that is fucked up, don't do that. But it's interesting seeing how she went from an apology to a, hey, leave my friends out of it, to all of a sudden, hey, leave my child out of it. I really don't want this to come across wrong, but I'm just, this is all I know. And all of these text posts are still up on her burner account for now, so you can go look at them. Don't stir up stuff in the comments, but you can look at them and try and come to your own conclusions about this. But I don't know, just seems a little strange is all. So yeah, some updates to this situation. After the preliminary voting round of the Cheer Choice Awards, Katie is out of the running. There's no confirmation that she was kicked out for violating the rules from last year. She could have also just not gotten enough votes to move on. Crochet Grove did move on to round one and someone else I've talked about on this channel, Karin Joy. So there were still 40 people in this category. Round two voting started today, December 12th. And both of our crafty besties are still left in the 21 people still in the running for round two. Round three is December 19th to 23rd. Round four is December 26th to 30th. And the awards will be announced on April 14th, 2024 in Las Vegas. Should I go? Just kidding. I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. Tiny bit of tangential drama before we end. So in response to this at the beginning of December, there are accusations that a few creators are using this situation to clout chase. And I put that in quotes because I don't know, it's kind of an interesting gripe to have. Like most people online are clout chasing in one way or another. And I guess I can see the argument that like someone talking about a current situation that they're not involved in and making themselves a part of it is clout chasing. But then you'd have to call me a clout chaser and that's fine, but I digress. So then other people made TikToks to call out the clout chasers. And I'm honestly not gonna go into this too much because it's just, it's not, it's not that interesting. It's pretty basic. Other people posted TikToks about needing to rebuild the crochet community and how the community is so toxic. There's so much drama and all of this stuff and we need to stop bullying creators. Interestingly, a lot of this is around people bullying Katie. It seems like there's a lot of people online that are standing up for her and in response to these accusations that Annabelle has presented, they're saying, 
hey, you're just bullying her. Like we shouldn't be bullying people. And instead of actually engaging critically with what Annabelle has to say, which I think there's probably more nuance to and like would be super interesting to hear Katie's side of the story. But I don't think you can just call it bullying when someone presents all these facts to you like this. In this clout chasing adjacent drama, one person said that the word was overused and that it's like abusing the N word at this point, which uh, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> but anyway, it seems like Katie realized that if she just stopped posting, then people People would start fighting amongst themselves. And that's kind of what happened so far with all of this. And yeah, what were the consequences of Katie's actions? In the past 30 days, she has lost 1400 followers on her main TikTok account. According to Social Blade, her follower numbers were already trending down before Annabelle's My Truth posts. But in the two days after those posts, she lost 500 followers. The Cheer Choice Awards has since updated their rules where in order to vote, you need to check a box with an agreement. I understand and agree that any purchased votes go as a donation to spread the cheer. I also agree that I am not a nominee nominee voting for myself and have not been compensated by a nominee in exchange for votes. And other than that, pretty much nothing. There was a subreddit called Crochet Influencer Drama that had really strict mods. It used to be public with a no content creators rule. It went private for a while and then was recently deleted. From what I can see on other subreddits, cause I'm not allowed in that one. Crochet Influencers Drama was a big hub of discussion about Katie and people are speculating that she once again engaged in mass reporting to get this shut down. And while Annabelle's accusations are shocking, if true, not everyone is going to sit through a 10 minute TikTok, then click on a separate link to go to another 10 minute YouTube video to weed through all of these accusations. Katie's choosing not to address this on her main TikTok. Her apology is set to friends only or deleted now. And she seems to be posting as normal, even planning a pattern release on Instagram and Facebook where it seems likely that her followers wouldn't have seen Annabelle's TikTok or YouTube video at all. After just a little searching around on TikTok and Reddit, it appears that there is much more to be said about Katie this is not her first time in controversy. She seems to cycle through close friend groups fairly regularly. And from what I can tell, she is pretty good at covering up her drama. But I know a lot of people personally in the community and I've heard stories. But in the interest of this video not being too long and not airing details from private communications with others yet, we'll save that for another day, perhaps. But for now, the bullying accusations are being swept under the rug and people will forget about them in a week or two when she can start posting on TikTok and going live again. Or I don't know, maybe people will remember this time. And that's kind of it. I don't think anyone deserves to be aggressively deplatformed and bullied over making a mistake if that's what this was. There doesn't need to be a hate campaign. This is a situation where if you disagree with her, simply unfollowing and not supporting her anymore is enough. I personally would be really interested to hear her side of the story in all of this because in a few TikTok comments, she mentioned that Annabelle cropped screenshots in ways that made Katie look worse and Annabelle look better. Katie, if you're watching this and you wanna come on here and do an interview, then you know where to find me. But that's all. One like on this video equals one vote for my non-existent Cheer Choice Award nomination. Subscribe if you care. Email me with stories if you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, and look at these sick Converse that my friend Alex made me. I'm literally wearing them inside because they're so cool. Look at this, two flowers. Okay, bye.